So there's our bulls. Um, just having a little break of grass, like you can see, it's not particularly big, but we are trying to eke it out because we've had a pretty intense kind of drought here, and we just, uh, you know, we've had rain to break it, but we haven't got grass yet. We're just waiting for the grass to grow. So the longer I can keep them in this block, the better. Now, I don't know if you can see, but under the trees over there, on the far side of the trees, is a fence line, and that's the that's the boundary of this block. We actually lease the adjacent block as well. Um, but it's taken us uh, oh, two and a half, three weeks to come this far across. So I guess we're... just wait, girls, just wait. Um, so I guess it's probably taken us uh, yeah two and a half, three weeks to get to where we are now, and we've got another two weeks. So I'm kind of hoping in two weeks, all going well, uh, with a bit of nitrogen fertilizer and a little bit of heat, we'll have some grass to feed these guys. Um, because for a long time there it's been looking pretty ugly. So this is the heifer mob and you'll probably notice we've got some bigger, bigger R2 heifers there and some, uh, some wieners. So this mob is slightly bigger so they're going to get a bigger break. So you probably notice that uh, the heifers are getting quite a lot wider break than the bulls are and that's, uh, well that's basically just down to the fact that there's more animals in the mob so the amount of land area you get is proportionate to basically the feed demand and feed demand is driven by a bunch of things but probably the first one in this instance is the number of animals in the mob and then the individual animals demand so bulls on a per head basis need more feed than a heifer of an equivalent size and that's because they're more muscular and muscle basically goes through a lot more energy and requires more protein to maintain um, but there's more animals in this mob and also because I have my uh, R2 heifers in here they're substantially bigger than the, than the wieners and so that drives demand as well so even though they're a heifer because they're well um, they're probably 50 to 60 percent bigger than the bulls they also need a little bit more too um, the other thing too is there's a little bit less pressure on me to get my bulls to a particular weight at a particular time whereas the, the heifer calves I really need to grow them pretty continuously the whole, the whole way through the winter so that uh, they're ready to mate at, uh, at 15 months old whereas the bulls um, are sort of and not targeting to sell them until they're another year older um, and, and actually we don't want gigantic bulls because our clients who are going to buy the bulls off us don't want big bulls to uh, crush their cows they want a, they want a good healthy medium sort of bull and so that targets all the This is actually, I'm in the in a paddock that uh, the cows came out of yesterday, so it's only been one day, um, but I just thought it was kind of interesting because, um, I'll just turn the camera around, but if you, if you have a look, you can see there's a hot wire there. The cows have been grazing the hillside and uh, the lower part of the paddock has been saved for the wieners. Um, now the, the stuff on the hillside, you can tell there's very little dead material left, there's very little of anything, but just in one day, um, we've had quite a lot of regrowth on that, so that's kind of the effect that we're looking for. So in probably three or four weeks, uh, that hillside will be ready to graze again, and it'll be good quality feed, because um, what will happen is in probably a month or two months' time, we're going to swap, and uh, the wieners will have to start going and grazing hillsides. We'll have, to, we'll have to save the better quality pasture down on the bottom, uh, down on the flats for the cows, because the cows are getting close to calving. Um, and uh, with the cows getting close to calving, they start getting bigger, they get a bit clumsy and we can make a them up on the hills. Um, it is good for them to be up on the hills now because it gets them nice and fit and that reduces, um, it reduces calving difficulties. You know, they build up good quality you know, muscles, they have good pelvic muscles and all those sorts of things so they can actually really squeeze that calf out. Uh, it's good for them to be nice and fit, but uh, really close to calving and um, they start getting hormones float around in their blood which make them more prone to injuries because they, they sort of relax muscles and they're more prone to muscle tears and stuff like that. So we'll swap them around, we'll get them down onto the flats where they can have a bit of an easier life um, and, uh, and we can monitor them nice and closely because as they get closer to calving they're more 
prone to all sorts of health issues, so we need to be able to keep a closer look at them. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, that's their job. Clean out the hillsides, and uh, the reward is pretty soon they'll be able to come down to the flats and have a little bit of relaxation and have their babies. So just shooting down the road here, our sort of last job for the morning, well actually I guess it's afternoon now, uh, our last job for today is going to be, we're going to feed out some uh, maize silage or corn silage to our cattle. Um, there's four groups of cattle that will get it, so the two groups of weaners that we shifted the brake fences for earlier will get, uh, will get maize silage. Um, I've got a couple of cattle here that are situated right next to the, um, right next to the silage stack. Um, one's I guess we call them a freezer beast. It's an animal that we're rearing just for just for eating at the house. Um, and the other one is uh, an older cow that we've got that's uh, a bit of a pet. And um, she, her feet tend to give her a few problems. So we, I find it's easier in the winter to just separate her out from the rest of the mob and keep her somewhere, um, keep her somewhere handy, so that I can. Um, yeah, just pamper her a little bit and, um, and keep her in better condition because I know with her feet um, sometimes getting sore, you know, she can she can lose weight because she doesn't walk around to graze as much. Um, so that's uh, that's the story with her. Her name's Lucy. Um, you can meet Lucy in a second. So we've got two groups of weaners. We've got these uh, couple of cattle close to the um, close to the silage stack. Uh, and we've also got our R2 bulls, so those are bulls that are, will be two-year-olds soon. So R2 means rising two-year-old, R1, rising one-year-old, R3, we'll figure it out. Um, so our R1, R1 bulls are the weaners, um, so sort of interchangeable terminology, our R2s um, are basically 18-month-old bulls. Now the reason I have them separate, so I've got the R1 and R2 heifers mixed in a, in a mob together but I've kept the R1 and R2 bulls separate is the R2 bulls um, I don't want them right next to the heifers because they're sexually mature they're a bit more motivated they will be more prone to jump fences and, um, and cause problems um, and also because they're much closer to their target weight um, I can I've actually got them on a hill block I'm still feeding them maize but I've got them on a hill block where they've got to work a little bit harder because that way uh, they're properly fed, uh, but uh, I can sort of restrict their diet and take a little bit and keep them from getting too big um, because I don't want them to sort of overshoot the target, be too big, and uh, and then all of a sudden I can only sell them as a meat animal, which you will know, substantially reduce their, reduce their value. So, let's go. boys here are our service bulls, um, there's 10 in this mob and uh, they weigh sort of 450 kilos so it's that, that's uh, oh, I don't know what's 450 kilos in pounds, it must be, uh, must be 900 to 1000 pounds, something like that. Um, I think the average is 450, there's a few in there over 500 um, and our target weight is to get them to about 550 to 575 by say October next year. Um, so what that means is we actually have to grow them reasonably slowly. So if you have a look around this paddock, uh, she's pretty hungry on grass, um, but they're getting not quite ad lib corn silage, um, which will put them in good nick. It'll keep them nice and fat, but they won't grow a particularly big, they won't keep growing their frame because they're a little bit light on, on protein in their diet. Uh, not all of these bulls are home bred, so um, three of these bulls are bulls that I bought as uh, what we call service bulls, so they they mated my cows uh, this last spring, and they'll mate my cows again this coming spring, uh, and the remainder of them are bulls that we've bred ourselves, and those bulls will be on sold to other people to mate their cows. Um, now our target market is dairy farmers, um, 
So dairy farmers typically will mate their cows through the use of artificial insemination for a period of time, say six or eight weeks. Um, and that artificial insemination allows them to use the high quality dairy genetics and they'll get their replacement heifer calves that way. Um, every cow has to get in calf every year, but they don't need all of those calves. So the, the, the excess calves are sold into, usually into meat production systems. So Frisian bulls are particularly sought after. Um, but also probably even more sought after uh, what we call white faces. So that's a that's a Hereford uh, Frisian cross calf, and both the bulls and the heifers of those are, are reasonably well sought after. So lots of dairy farmers, especially dairy farmers with a you know herd that's predominantly Holstein Frisians, uh, they'll buy Jersey bulls and they'll natural mate for the last three to four weeks of. Of mating, so let the let the, uh, let the bulls pick the cows and, and get them. It's a very reliable way of getting cows in calf because cows are, are sorry, bulls are much better at selecting uh, cows that are receptive to mating than humans are because it's it's basically their one uh, their one life skill is finding cows and mating cows, um, and so it's a good way of making sure those last cows, which might be difficult to pick, will get in calf, and you also get a um, <coughs> A reasonably good value uh, saleable calf, it doesn't matter if it's a bull or a heifer. So that's one system. Lots of dairy farmers use lots of different systems. Um, Herefords are very dominant in that space, but some people use Jersey bulls um, because you get good calving ease. Some people use Angus bulls because it means if you have crossbred cows, all the cows come out looking pretty much the same, and, and that makes it easier to um, easier to market the calves. Um, but our, I guess, our target niche is the dairy farmer with a freezing herd who's looking for a Hereford bull to mate her or his uh, his herd. So um, that's that's the destination for these guys. Now, because our herd is building, our cow herd is building, we've got more of these coming on. So this, this is the crop of bulls, or crop of what I think are decent bulls that were born in 2018. Um, and you might notice some of these got horns. So we've made a mating decision now where we only use polled uh, we only use polled bulls, so the calves that we moved earlier, and we'll go back to give them some silage in a minute, uh, they are all polled, with the exception of one calf, I don't know how he ended up with horns, um, but nevertheless he did, um, and so that's sort of something we're moving to, and we're keeping, you know, we're, we're only keeping Hereford uh, heifer calves, and so what's happening is we're getting a bigger and bigger crop, so there's seven in this crop, uh, the 2019 born crop, there was 29 bull calves born that I thought were uh, suitable for service. Um, and I'm forecasting we should get to something like 35 or 40 out of this coming year's crop. Um, and in the long term, I'd like to be, well, just keep growing.